uh, the targeting yet again of key infrastructure in Ukraine. What can you tell us about these latest, latest attacks? Yes, yeah, Sarah Jane. I mean, another round of, of big attacks, a uh, very big explosion in Kiev, in uh, Lviv, uh, in uh, Zaporizhia as well, around the country. And the Russians have been very successful at, at targeting. Uh, the infrastructure, the electric, electrical infrastructure of Ukraine, maybe because they know where it all is. They built it. It's the old Soviet system. So they don't just know where the power stations are, they know where the substations are, they know where the small areas are where they can break the lines of transmission. And apart from the explosion in Kiev, Moldova, neighbouring country, has a massive power outage as a result of this. This happened uh, just over a week ago. Uh, the uh, president, Maya uh, uh, Sandu, is extremely un uh, annoyed about that. They've called the Russian ambassador in to explain it because Moldova is also part of the system. So when they hit Ukraine, they also put Moldova out. Moldova, a small country, two and a half million people. It's very vulnerable. It's extremely liable to instability. It doesn't help them at all. And, of course, in Zaporizhia, the um, maternity home. Um, e only this morning, the British Ministry of Defence, Defence Intelligence, said that the Russians are using drones so they can prioritise uh, medical facilities as targets of opportunity. And it's what the Russians do. Sorovakin, the commander, he was famous for this. When he commanded in Syria, they famously targeted all of the hospitals and medical facilities ahead of any other attacks because he believes that that has a big effect on civilian morale, which indeed it does. So, sadly, we'll see quite a lot more of this, I think. Yeah, oh, horrific. Um... Let's talk about uh, the UK's continued support of Ukraine, sending these three helicopters to the country. Uh, tell me about the helicopters and uh, what kind of effect they're going to have. Yeah, well, it depends what they do with them. Um, so three, people say, well, what's the point of three helicopters? These were taken out of service in Britain in 2018. The, the Navy and the Marines, they called them the Jumblies. Jumbly helicopters. Jumbly. Uh, junglies. Oh, yeah, jungly. <laughs> um, because they're very useful. But the Navy mainly used them for anti-submarine warfare. Now, the MOD hasn't said what these would be used for, but if they are used for anti-submarine warfare, they could make quite a big difference in the Black Sea because the Russians are having a hard time in the western part of the Black Sea. The Ukrainians have targeted their shipping really well. But the Black Sea fleet includes six submarines, of which four are Kilo-class, very modern, very good submarines, which the Russians have got. If these are being used for anti-submarine warfare, if they could be used, I don't know if they will, mm. but if that's what they're there for, if that's what the six weeks training is for, you don't, need, you don't need six weeks to train a helicopter pilot to fly a different helicopter. If it's anti-submarine warfare they're training them for, then that might make a difference in the Black Sea. Um, just a quick word on Kherson, of course, retaken uh, by Ukraine, uh, civilians being asked to evacuate. Is it still active in terms of the war front? What's going on there? No, uh, they're still fighting. I mean, there's artillery duels going on either side of the river in, in uh, Kherson itself, and that's likely to continue. But this is where the helicopters become interesting. The Ukrainians are fighting in the Kimburn spit, that spit of land that, mo that, that uh, moves right out into the mouth of the, uh, the Dnipro uh, River. And the point is the Ukrainians have got that, the western part of that spit. They're still fighting for the rest of it. But because of that, they have now got control over most of the western part of the Black Sea. And if these anti-submarine warfare helicopters, if that's what they turn out to be, you can see that the Ukrainians are actually gaining more control in their part of the Black Sea, which really matters to them. And meanwhile, the Russians are pulling some troops away now that they've withdrawn from the other side of the Dnieper River. And we thought that they'd be pulling those troops out in order to go right all the way through to the Donbass, which is where the fighting is still fierce. But they're not all going there. Quite a lot of them are actually going to Melitopol, and the Russians are digging in at Melitopol. Why are they doing that? Because they fear that maybe over the winter the Ukrainians might, might open a third l layer of a third direction of, of, of uh, attack, a third offensive from Zaporizhia down to Melitopol in order to put Crimea under even greater pressure. Now, that's a big ask, but so far the Ukrainians have done quite a lot of things that are apparently impossible, and they've found ways of doing it. In the analysis business, we're all asking if they can do this. And it now looks, from the way the Russians are, are, are disposing of their troops, the Russians are asking themselves the same question.